join us here today at one of my local winter venues, which is Manor Farm Lakes in Bedfordshire. This one, Booney's Lake. Oh, it's, it's my favourite lake on the complex, this, because, well, mainly because of the stock of the fish it holds. There's a um, right old mixed bag. There's some long, lean, hard fighting commons, big, fat, deep ones, and scaly mirrors. It's like every time you get a take, you kind of uh, get excited. Oh, I'm secretly hoping it's one of those, those scaly mirrors every time. But anyway, we're here to uh, discuss some of my winter tactics and mainly solid bag fishing and, and explain to you why it's my go-to take anywhere tactic. I got down here quite late yesterday evening, which is uh, usually the case for my winter fishing, turning up after work in the dark as it gets dark at four or five o'clock in the evening at the moment. Um, so yeah, it is a bit of a fast sometimes getting the rods out, but luckily I know this swim quite well and I know the wraps for all the spots and got them out with not much faff at all and uh, yeah, got off the mark quite quickly catching, catching a few fish. The first one being a real nice dark jet black common, I think that was 28 and a half pound. Uh, quite soon after that catching another one about mid 20s so yeah I was well happy to actually get off the mark that quickly making me quite confident for a few more fish. A uh, bit nervous about the weather that we're currently out in. Storm Eunice, I think this one's called. I think they're on about winds of up to 70 odd miles an hour. So we were yeah, quite careful where to put the put the brollies and that. Because you know, don't want any branches <laughs> falling on us. That was a bit, yeah, so we're gonna be looking up quite a bit. But before we get into the into the details of my solid bag fishing and everything, we've got something a bit nice in the sling, it's a bit of a bit of a beast so we'll, uh, yeah, it's definitely made me forget all about the bad weather so we're gonna yeah, get that out and we'll take a good look at it. What a way to kick things off with this 33 pound lovely boonies common. Typical fish for here, big, dark and interesting. This is a perfect example of why I absolutely love my solid bag fishing, ca catching fish like this. It's, um, yeah, coming slow and heavy. You can tell the bigger fish straight away. A lot of little ones in here, they dart around for a bit and uh, round, round the net and they yeah, come in easy but this one held its ground in the, in the middle of the lake and yeah, it took, took a while to get in but yeah definitely happy with that. It's making me feel a lot less nervous about, about the trees wobbling around ahead of us but um, yeah after I get this back I'll uh, explain exactly the tactics how I caught it and how I caught catch a lot of my other fish in here as well. Uh, what a fish. Yeah, well happy with that. winter solid bag fishing is always my number one go to take anywhere tactic I've got so much confidence in it I can put it over most lake beds and um, I like the fact that I can pack anything I want into a nice neat little bag that I know that's going to be presented well and if a carp comes across it nine times out of ten I think it finds it hard to resist especially as the within the DNA range you've got so much choice you're you're only limited to your imagination with all the powders and liquids and uh, pellets and um, yeah I've, I've, I've quite enjoyed trying most of them. Um, at the moment I seem to be favouring the milky malt wafters with the Beatston mini mix and uh, the bug bait soak. 
Um, yeah, you know, I started using it as soon as I did start catching a load of fish, so built up my confidence, so I thought why not just put all three rods out of it, and that's what I tend to use most of the time now. But um, yeah, talk, talking about tying the solid bags um, itself, I'm not saying this is the the on, only way to tie them or the correct way to tie them, it's just the way that I, I've always done it and I like to do it. But the talking about the rig itself, in this lake I like to use a length of lead core because of the gravel bars in there, they've got, I'm a bit worried about I'm going to get, get cut off by some of them, so it's just to protect the line really. As well as that, I'm using an um, inline with a long stem to help tie in the bag, fish drop off style because um, there is a few snags in the lake and as well as that, when you're using a short rig, you don't really want the lead bouncing around near the fish, um, making it almost like a disgorger to get rid of the hook, especially the barbless hook rule here as well. The, the rig itself, it's just, um, you can't get much simpler. It's really just a, just a short hair rig. It's important to use a, a subtle hook link. You don't want to be using things like fluorocarbon or coated, coated hook link material because it won't fit in the bag neatly and it will stick and poke up funny when, it, when the bag's melted. As well as that, it just, it's just easier to put in. And then, come down, I like to use a piece of shrink tubing. Uh, to aid with the hooking in the fish and also to help me to position the hook bait in the bag a lot easier. And as like I said earlier, I started to favour the, the large wafters, um, mainly because I feel like I can get away with using a slightly bigger hook with it balanced a lot easier. It makes the hook weightless. So when the fish comes along and engulfs the bag, the, the hook bait just, just uh, floats up into, into its gob with, with ease. And uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll start off with uh, grabbing a bag out of the packet and uh, yeah, give it a quick blow to open it up and I'm sure there's other ways of filling it up but I've always done it with a, with a teaspoon of uh, a lot of people, they um, tend to avoid solid bags so I think it's a um, a bit of a faff and to be honest I did too a few years ago I just thought I can bother with that and tying them up for make a wrong cast I've got to re redo it and everything but uh, once you've done a few it's as easy, easy as anything you can knock them up in, in, in no time with uh, almost with your eyes closed so there's, yeah, there's no real real problem at all and then once I put a teaspoon of beet stim pellet in I will squirt a bit of the bug bait soak give it a nice healthy dollop and lowering in the hook bait just making sure the I don't know if you can see that the, the wafter is up one side of the bag then I'll just use my fingers just to get it in position and as I said earlier with the shrink tube I can push that down so it's laying flat nice and neat on top of the pellet remember is how you put it in the bag depends on how it will present itself out in the lake then I will continue loading the bag up further with some more pellet. Just keep on whacking that in. It feels like I'm serving up a nice little snack for the cart ready to be put out onto its dinner plate. Now just keep on loading that up. When I get to about three quarters full, I'll plop the lead in just um, just give it a little tap, just to let the pellet settle, take out any any air. As well as that, the liquid helps to fill in all the gaps as well, which um, less air in there, the quicker it sinks to the bottom, and the easier you can you can feel for a drop. So I'll, yeah, just keep on doing that and making sure it's nice and compact and tight. Then I'll put a few more pellets in, top it up, I'm not spilling too much. And then uh, I'll just push that down with my fingers. Just making sure it's nice and tight. The tighter it is, the better the, like I said, the, the easier it will fly through the air and also the, the quicker it will sink to the bottom so you can, so you can feel for that, that drop. And I might tip, tip a few bits out if you put, put too much in. And, and once that's feeling nice and tight, Give it a, a good slobbering all the way around, nice and wet, and then give it a twist and 
still licking the tag ends as you twist. And just hold that there for a few seconds while it sets. So once that's set, then I'll just to neaten it up a bit and make it even tighter, I will pinch the corners. Just pushing out in the air again. Give that a lick and hold that there. And the same on the other side. And there you go, a nice neat solid bag which will which will catch any carp. As I said, I um, I actually favour the, the beet stem pellet. I mean, I, I know plenty, plenty of people that use the crayfish mini mix and catch lots of fish, but the thing I like about the beet stem uh, pellet is it's a low oil pellet. So if I want to uh, spot out some matter, I like to use the matching six mil pellet and I don't have to worry about overfilling them with too much oil in the water and, and all of that. And also it breaks down a lot quicker in, in colder water, just giving off more, more attractors and yeah, I've just I've always used it. It's what I've caught plenty of fish on, so yeah, I'm happy.